Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we're going to show you what a very simplistic, what we call state covariance matrix will look like. In the event here, we have a state matrix that has both the position and the velocity in the x direction. Let's say that the initial position was 50 meters, the initial velocity was 5 meters per second, the initial acceleration was 2 meters per second squared. And through some analysis, we've shown that the standard deviation of the variation in the position caused by the processing of the data, so this would be what we call the process variation, is 0.5 meters, and the variation in the velocity is 0.2 meters per second. So these are variations caused by the process, not by reading the actual data or making measurement, data measurements. So the state covariance matrix looks like this. On the diagonal, we have the variances of the two variables that we are trying to track, position and velocity. And on the off diagonal, we have the elements that show the covariance, the relationship between position and velocity. Now let's go ahead and calculate those elements. In this case, if the standard deviation is 0.5 meters, then the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, is equal to 0.5 squared, which is equal to 0.25. And for the velocity, we have the variance relative to the velocity is equal to 0.2 quantity squared, which is equal to 0.04. So those become the two diagonal elements. Those are the variances in position and velocity. So the state covariance matrix then looks like this. On the diagonal, we get 0.25 and 0.04. Now to find the off diagonal elements, we're going to multiply the standard deviation of position with the standard deviation of velocity. So that is this times this. That is equal to 0.5 multiplied times 0.2, which is equal to 0.1. And that is the value that goes in the off diagonal elements, 0.1 and 0.1. So this gives us what we call the state covariance matrix. This is the matrix that will help us figure out how much emphasis we need to place with the Kalman gain on the predicted value or how much we should how much emphasis we should place on the measured value. Again, the state covariance matrix indicates the kind of error we can expect in the processing of the data, and this is what we can then look for. Now, to actually calculate those can get quite complicated, and we'll show you some examples where we actually take and we go through the entire system, we'll go through an entire Kalman filter process, and then you'll see step for step how we then, for a realistic example, find the particular elements. In this case, it's fairly straightforward. We had determined through some process what the variation can be expected to be for the position and for the velocity in our particular process. But sometimes we have to go even a step further and go through the process of determining that. In this case, we just went ahead and gave you some initial values to see what the matrix would look like and how to calculate the covariance matrix in a realistic example like this. Although, a simple example. That's how it's done.